you are going to see my sit down interview with Leah Hextall, the broadcaster. She became the first woman to call a nationally televised NHL game last year, just before the pandemic hit. So that was really cool. We had a great talk about her career so far, her favorite games and what's next for her. Check it out. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today, Leah. This is really awesome. We're trying to get some more female voices on the show because it's very male centric. So, and you're you're a great person to talk to, and you're also uh, you're also from Central Canada as well. So that that works with the uh, the Saskatchewan viewers. They have a lot of uh, Manitoba viewers, so and listeners. So, yes, I'm things. actually in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which Rachel is the geographical center of North America. It even really? says so on our signs. Yes, actually, we're very proud of it. Apparently, here in Manitoba. <laughs> That's really cool, actually. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, there you go. Little history lesson for you. So I guess just tell um, tell the viewers about your career. Like, how did you get to this point doing play by play for? You know, obviously you've done some NHL and then you did some NCAA. How did you get to this point? So it's it's a bit of a long story. So I'll just really try to put it down to the interesting part. So let's start there. Um, you know, I started back in 2003 and I was lucky and fortunate to get a job at my hometown station, CKX Television and their sports department right out of school, which I look back now and it was such a gift to get that opportunity. From there, I bounced into Winnipeg at CTV, worked there for a lot of years and, you know, and continued to climb up the ladder. And then I got a big break in Boston at Nesson. And that really changed the scope of my career because for the next two years, all of a sudden you're covering the World Series champions, the Boston, you know, Red Sox, and you're covering Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. And when you're on that type of stage, suddenly people start to pay attention to you. And that led me to a job offer from Sportsnet when they received the NHL rights and that historic 12-year deal for $5.2 billion and brought in the Hockey Night in Canada brand. And when I walked through the doors at CKX, that was the goal to work for Hockey Night in Canada. So even though Boston was incredible, mm. I decided to come back to Canada and moved to Toronto to work for them. But two years after we started, massive layoffs, and I was one of them. And then after that, uh, you know, I just, frankly, I couldn't get a job. I couldn't get a job in the industry after, you know, 13 years and getting to national and being on hockey night in Canada and all this experience behind me, I just couldn't get a job again. The people I was losing out to were often younger. And at that time I was in my late thirties and they also were less experienced, which means you didn't have to pay them as much. And that's just economic. And that's when the idea of calling play by play came into my mind. And it was something I had always wanted to try and briefly tried at Sportsnet, but because I was so busy doing everything else, I didn't have the time to practice. I didn't have the time to do it. And, you know, there weren't really any opportunities anyways. But during that time, that's when I started putting the feelers out. And I started, first person I told was my agent. I said, what about play by play? I'm a broadcaster that has a certain amount of history behind myself. And there's no women doing it. And I really looked at it as there's an opportunity here if I'm willing to put in the work. And it was gonna be a lot of work and it has been a lot of work. And, you know, from there, it was just simply, you know, as I mentioned, putting the feelers out, reach back out to the same gentleman who laid me off at Sportsnet and told them that this is what I'd like to do. And they had the Canadian Women's Hockey League package at the time, and they gave me the opportunity to call play by play. We're going to take a quick break now, but don't go anywhere. More with Leah coming up after the break. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street and view our showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. Yeah. 
how do you kind of stay focused when there's no work? And I, that, I have another question sort of related to that, like obviously trying to call games during a pandemic, just what was that like? In addition to not work, not calling games for a while, then I'm assuming you're calling games remotely as well. What was that like? Yeah, so we, I've been very fortunate because I've been able to be in the ranks when I've called during the pandemic. When we were in Fargo in North Dakota, they were open up enough that there was even some fans at the game. They had 25% capacity. So it felt a little different because obviously there was the testing and you're wearing masks and your color person is down the hallway from you instead of right beside you, basically. So you can see them, but they're, you know, quite far away. So you kind of miss that camaraderie. Um, But that game felt fairly normal it wasn't that bad but I just called the PWHPA Dream Gap Tour Mm -hmm. in Calgary with Cassie and that was at the Saddle Dome and it was completely empty it's a you know obviously an NHL rink Mm -hmm. and you don't you know we didn't even see our producer once they're on site but nobody's allowed to see each other you're not allowed to connect with the players so it's very different than what it was prior to that so that was my first experience without a crowd and I have to say Rachel I I hated it you know like I loved the call of the game but you realize how important and I I know this probably sounds silly but how important the crowd is Mm -hmm. I mean I can't imagine what the players have felt like not playing in front of fans for so long in Canada this year in the NHL because I know just from a play call you ride the waves of the energy from the crowd you know if there's a breakaway people start to crescendo so you start to crescendo they're almost a bit of a guide for you so I found that I really had to almost work myself up a bit to get my call a little bit higher because if not it's almost like you're calling the game off of a television in your living room because there's no of that game atmosphere so Um, I have to say, it's interesting because Cassie and I, when we called our NHL game, um, it was Calgary and Vegas. And it was the last game Calgary had with fans before the world shut down. And then we called these games for the PWHPA. And they had said, you guys called our last game with fans. And this will be our last game without fans. So that's an exciting thing going forward. It's a, you know, little trivia question there, but I can't wait for fans to get back in the stands because uh, it it makes a huge difference. Yeah, I just, I mean, just relating to that on a personal level, like obviously I haven't called them at a level like you, but I just remember when I was doing games at Western uh, in London, Ontario, and normally they don't get fans for the hockey games just for football, um, but they had a lot of school day games. So we'd have the kids and they'd come in at 11 and the amount like the difference in terms of like levels because it's packed and you have all these mm-hmm. kids and they're all screaming and it's so loud you can't even hear yourself think but you it's also better than the games normally when it's like a few parents and it, it wasn't really good but when you have the kids it's like you really feed off that energy and it was hard because they're loud and as I said it's hard to hear yourself think but it was so much better and I think the players liked it liked it way better too. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and it's just, I couldn't believe the difference. And so I'm I'm actually really happy I received that experience because it teaches you something. I hope we never have to experience this again ever in my lifetime, but it it is something. And and now I know the difference between having the crowd and not having the crowd when I'm calling a game. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This has really been a lot of fun. And I think the viewers will really get a lot out of this. No problem, Rachel. I really appreciate you having me on. This has been great. Thank you so much to Leah Hextall for joining me. I really learned a lot from her. Her experience has really been invaluable. And don't forget to stick around because the main show with Rod and Darren is coming up next. Breaking news. The CFL Board of Governors votes unanimously to begin a shortened 14-game season on August 5th. How about that? We're going ahead. We're opening training camp. We're going to kick off August 5th. They're doing what's best for the league. They're doing what's best for the game. They're doing what's best for their players and staff. They're moving ahead. So bravo to them. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It absolutely is. Good day, Canada. Welcome to uh, the RP Show, episode number 506. 
and to the Canadian sports fan friends of ours watching around the world, particularly America. And stay tuned for that because I got a special shout out coming up here. I got Moose DuPont with me. How are you, Moose? You know, I'm doing great. You know, every time we have our pre show meetings yes. and we talk about the business and all these things that we're excited about in the future of the show, it makes me not want to do the show. It makes me want to go to work for two hours. <laughs> so you get me all fired up and then I got to sit and have coffee. I, I know. And I just sat here and realized wait a minute, I didn't call up the comments page here. I did not go live onto YouTube yet. So hang on. But it's a big day. The Canadian Football League schedule has now been released. How about that? And when I say that I want to... Hello, where's Rick Regan? When I say that I want to send a special... There we go. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Stuart Tribby is watching from Facebook. On Facebook, he says, Stu from Baraboo, Wisconsin. How about that? Thanks. Okay, Rick. How about that? So I think... Stu, what do you want to talk about? Because I've been got a lot of messages yesterday from people. All the, I really like how you read my comments. It just made me feel part of it. This is a new viewer. He's in Baraboo, Wisconsin, which I am today years old that I even knew there was a Baraboo, Wisconsin, and I'd like to know what he'd like to talk about. I feel like he's probably tuning in for CFL news. You yeah, know? Well, why not? It's a big deal around the continent. Big deal. Which we've learned over the last year. Especially in Wisconsin. Mm. Um, coming up on the program today... Toronto Argonauts defensive end Charleston Hughes. Professional fan Cameron Hughes. He was just lighting up the crowd in Vegas last night, and today we got him live here. And what? Justin Dunk is a late ad. Real nice, Clark. Hour two. Justin Dunk will join us to talk a little CFL, so that's good. So anyways, (laughs) Uh, Stu in Baraboo, Wisconsin, he says, go Montreal Call call Fieldians. <laughs> Done with you, Stu. <laughs> he says, <laughs> Montreal, give them some love. Okay, let's get to the Quick Six Show topics then. I just... I assume we want to talk football. Gets to talk hockey. <laughs> he wants to talk hockey in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Okay, it's fine. It's a big hockey big state. Big Badgers fan. Uh, first, so hang on, because... The Quick Six Show topics go as of importance to me. And for number one on my radar is that the Canadian Football League is back. Two little birdies told me this morning that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders' first game would be Friday, August the 6th against the British Columbia Lions. And that became my commentary today on uh, Cat Country and Rock 98.5 FM that the Lions are coming. And I said, you're going to have to need, Darren, you're going to need to buy a program at that game. And then I'm like, wait a minute, it's 2021. You're going to have to print off a roster at home before you come to the game. His teams don't sell programs anymore for the most part. That's right. right? Who are these guys? That's right. But you still got Cody Fajardo. You still got Mike Riley. And it's just going to be fantastic. So we'll get to uh, the CFL stuff and all the tributaries that run off of that, particularly with Charleston Hughes, who's going to be right here in the bunker. And uh, Justin Duncan, hour two. So, yeah, we can talk about all that CFL stuff, but I just want to get through these. Number two, the Vegas Golden Knights vanquish the Montreal Canadiens 4-1 last night. It was a tremendous hockey game. And Darren, you have uh, taught me a lot in terms of, not that I really needed to hear it, but you said post-game trash talk is just not cool. You don't need to tweet anything. The, uh, they thrashed them. Yeah, they, no, they did. Them. They did. And unfortunately, I missed the early part of the game and I came in and it was, what, 2 nothing. Uh, you Vegas. knew it was over. <laughs> I kind of knew it was over. But, you know, the play was pretty even. Shots were pretty even. And then as we kind of hit the midway point of that second period, it just went whoop. And Montreal, I don't know if they touched the puck much in the second half of the hockey game, you know, outside of the final couple of minutes. Um, it, was, it was what we kind of expected. But this is the first lull from Montreal in Oh, yeah. Three weeks, right? Or two, three weeks. It's the first lull. You know, they haven't trailed uh, up until this point in seven games. They hadn't lost. So now we'll see what happens, right? Carey Price was still good, even though he made a couple of little mistakes. Um, we'll see how they respond. That'll be interesting. Game two could tell you a lot, much like the Colorado Vegas series. Game two kind of will tell you what's going to happen. The Montreal Caulfieldians. That's what he said down there in Wisconsin. So I get it. We saw the Caulfield family at Mm T-Mobile last night. There weren't a lot of Habs fans. My buddy, who's calling me? Don't they know I'm on the air? 
my sober coach, Bob Marier, the sober coach to the stars. That's not how he started to work with me, but he's, he was in the crowd last night. You got to follow him on Instagram because he's like, I've never felt so alone. He's from Montreal, <laughs> right? So he's okay. in that sea of yeah. humanity in Vegas last night. There weren't a lot of Montreal fans. And yeah, it was workmanlike effort. Carey Price went into God mode again, but it wasn't enough. They're not good enough. Montreal, I'm sorry, they're playing the number one team in the National Hockey League. That's the Vegas Golden Knights. Montreal's what, 16th? Okay. Yeah. Carey made some saves where you saw, you're you like, what? I know. Unbelievable Carey Pricey in saves. But he had to make more than that yeah. because they're not good enough. And they took too many penalties. So they're up one game to none. And I can tell you this, that there is room on the Vegas Golden Knights train. And we're not taking you to the train station. Any more on that? No, that's great. Okay, point two. It's the Islanders at Tampa Bay tonight, and this is big, 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 big. The Islanders fell down 0-2 last year to Tampa Bay in this series and ended up losing to the Lightning. There's a very good chance that they go up 2-0 tonight in Tampa. Now, the series wouldn't be over if they did, but holy smokes. I'm really into this series. If you can take two on the road in Tampa, that will go a long, long ways, right? I mean... When you get up, it, this is much like Montreal, you know, what, what they did to Winnipeg and to Toronto. You know, when they get up, they're so good defensively. And Barry Trotz is just such a great coach. Um, it's really tough to find any room against, you know, the Islanders. And if they're getting any good goaltending, which they got from Varmolov or Varlamov in game one, um, they're really tough to beat. So if they get up early, look out. Tampa's yeah. going to be in some trouble. Going to be a great game tonight. <clears throat> Jex Robert Burton's watching on Facebook. He says, love the show, boys. Keep it up. Thank you, Jex. We love it, too. We love coming in here every day. William in Lloyd Minster says, I couldn't find you guys today. I realized it was the wrong show, but now I found the right one. We're not on Game Plus today. We are preempted by Blast Premiere. So... I know we're... As you know, we're very big in the seniors' homes, right? So those seniors... Get out your tablet. Get on it. Yeah, you're going to have to watch us streaming today, okay? You're going to have to watch it on Facebook and YouTube because we are preempted. It happens on these big national television networks where we reside. So it happens. You got us here. And he's, oh, we're continuing here. Uh, we're having a conversation. Jack says, I'm in E-Town. We're cheering for the Knights. And hey, Rod, how about the CFL coming back? Edmonton Elks? Hold on to your bingo cards, Jax. I'll come around to all of that. But speaking on that, yeah. I don't know that Clark's got the graphic, but we should plug the shirt. If, no, he, if, if, you, if, he, if he's yeah. watching and he's, an, and he's a Golden Knights fan, we created a shirt for the Golden Knight fans in Canada. In Edmonton. I just heard a groan from Clark. It feels like it's going to take him a minute or two, or two to find it. So That's fine. RodPetersonShop.com. It's like the first item on the, on the page. For Rod Canadian Golden Knights fans, we're doing a t-shirt thing. But last night, surfing Twitter, I saw, Darren, that we might not be the first ones to have come up with United. We might not be the first ones. Really? I'm not, I don't. There's a hashtag out there for United. So it might not have been us. I'm Ooh. not sure. Sort of burst your bubble. It felt like we really hit something. Yep. Okay. Um, Mel Redbird is watching on YouTube, writes in, and he says, Hey, Rod, would the XFL, what would the XFL have to gain from just talking to the CFL? Nothing, because it's the CFL that needs the XFL and Danny Garcia. Merge, please. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're 24 hours. We're less than 24 hours after finding out the CFL was even going to play, and we're also happy that they're going to play. Can we put a moratorium on the XFL talk until the offseason? Well, I was going to say Labor Day. It's <laughs> yes. not something we need to talk about right no, now. No, it's not. Not, yet, not. not now because they're going to watch and see how, this, how the fans you know, respond. and take. They're going to still have those conversations because playing doesn't fix the business model, right? Playing doesn't change the last 10 years of revenues and things like that. And there's good times and there's bad times all over this country. And, you know, your market might be great. The other market might not be. But playing doesn't change that. But playing will give us something to distract us from it while they yeah. still have those conversations. Well, so, yeah, we should wait. Uh, we should. And yesterday my phone blew up 
with these newspapers, uh, the Epoch Times, as I said, the Western Standard, these podcasts. Rod, what do you think about the CFL coming back? What do you? They're going to lose a lot of money. What about the merger? I'm like, no, no. This is a major boon for this show that the CFL is playing. And let's stay on that page. Everybody's happy right now. Why wouldn't we be? Let's stay on that. So the, the CFL-XFL merger is just it's not something I want to talk about right now. The warm-up, by the way, is brought to you by eCall Electric, your complete electrical distributor with locations in Regina, Estevan, Swift Current, Yorkton, and Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. eCall Electric, let's get to work. What do we say, Darren? Right after coffee. Right after coffee. Let's get to work. Quick points here, and then we'll come back on the CFL stuff in the warm-up. And then Charleston Hughes will be in here, I think. I haven't seen him roaming around, though. He's kind of he's kind of hard to miss. He's kind of hard to miss. Uh, point four, uh, Red Sox beat the Blue Jays last night 2-1. Uh, so it was a split at Fenway of four. Not bad. Vladdy two for four last night with a homer, one RBI. Speak of the devil. We're just talking about you. It was all good. Uh, what are the Blue Jays? They're, they got, uh, they're in Buffalo tonight. Who are they? They got the Yankees. Start spreading the news. So it would be a good TV night tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, point five. Hit. Are you into the NBA, Chucky? Yeah, of course you are. 2-2 two, two series for, uh, coming out of last night. Philly, Atlanta, and Utah and the Clippers. I know. Joel Embiid. Well, sure, but hey, we got some series here. Oh, yeah. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, and then tonight, Bucks nets it's making me think I got to tune in. That's three things to watch tonight. Stanley Cup, Blue Jays, and the NBA. You better get some fresh batteries for the remote. I know. Well, Steve, uh, Steve Nash. Still got a problem with Stephen A. Smith, what he said about Steve Nash. I had this talk the other day with somebody. They're like, oh, anybody can coach the Brooklyn Nets. No. You would know, Chucky, bad coaches can still screw up. A group like that. Oh, yeah. And Steve Nash is not that, but he better win. They better beat the Bucks. So, listen, I am paying attention, just not with all of my attention. And got an email from the Winnipeg Jets this morning. Hang on a second. You must have seen the news, uh, Darren. If I can read this. Canada Life and True North Sports and Entertainment are excited to announce a new strategic relationship that will see the home of the Winnipeg Jets and Manitoba Moose renamed to Canada Life Center effective July 1st. The arena typically hosts more than 140 events each year and is rec consistently recognized as one of the premier sports and entertainment venues in North America. Whew. So we're not even talking about what the old place was. It's Canada Life Center in Winnipeg, the home of your Winnipeg Jets and the Manitoba Moose. So, how about that? It's big news. Yeah, it is big news. How about that? So, <laughs> Rick's very excited. As is this guy in Edmonton, Jex. Hang on, dude. I like it, but comes in and thinks he's going to uh, take over the show. He seems like a smart bold. guy. Maybe we'll bold. give it to him. Bold. He's very I bold. Like I like it. Uh, hey, boys, this is from Jex Robert Burton in Edmonton. Any ideas about next WHL season? I'm all aboard the Bedard train and would love to uh, take a road trip a few games this upcoming season. My cousin Austin Watson used to play for the Pats, so I've always enjoyed watching them. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. And speaking of that, we're talking about the soccer. You see, soccer has not adorned any of my quick six show topics here right now. And if you want soccer, just don't come here i don't have a problem with soccer i'm supporting sask soccer here today oh yeah but as i said to you like i know charleston the euro cup listen that's fine does denmark have a team that's my country does denmark have a team yeah do they yeah. i'm pretty they sure do? they do well i guess i'll cheer for them i don't know but my point is <laughs> to croatia and these other countries let's ask them what they think about Connor Bedard and Cody Fajardo and the teams and leagues that I care about. Why do I got to get into that? That's not what I'm into. That's all. Nothing wrong with that. No, I'm just saying they don't care about us. Why do I care about soccer? I've never liked soccer. And look, I can, I can get into an event and, and maybe watch a game. And, and, right. You know, I've attached myself just to England because I've got it in my, in my blood, right? It was either going to be England or France. But, I'm, <laughs> but I haven't watched a second of it. I've but not I, watched a second. But I might. I'll watch a little bit of I'm it. I'm not anti-soccer, but I'm not pro-soccer, and we got enough stuff to talk about. Heavens knows there's nobody else talking about the CFL. 
in this country. Like, if you want to talk Euro 2020, go watch TSA. They're all over it. But we're going to talk about the Canadian Football League here because that's what we care about. And the last time I checked, this is Canada. <laughs> MLS. MLS. No. <laughs> Wait till Charleston Hughes gets on the set here. Yeah, Wait. Exactly. <laughs> but I said to Darren, it seems like soccer, there's more soccer there th- than any other sport. You know what I'm saying? Like in the NF- in football, we got the NFL, CFL, Arena League, Indoor League, maybe XFL, Alliance. But there's way more soccer. Seems like there's a million more leagues, a million more tournaments. Like it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. So I think Moose will let you go and we'll see you a little later on. Sounds good. Okay. The warm-ups for Ecole Electric. We've got Charleston Hughes of the Toronto Argonauts joining us in here next. Justin Dunk on the way, too, and Cameron Hughes, the professional van from Las Vegas. You're watching the RP Show. No Game Plus today, but we are on YouTube and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. In today's fast-paced world, we know you don't always have time to cook a nutritious meal. The Mad Greek and Moose Jaws got you covered with delicious takeout and delivery specials, even for large groups or occasions. Authentic Greek cuisine, pizza, ribs, and more. There's something for everyone to enjoy. Offering licensed dining, delivery, and their takeout window is open to get your Greek to go. For more information and to view the online menu, visit themadgreekeatery.com. Capital is Regina's trusted Ford Lincoln dealership. Whether you're on the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle, we got you covered. And when it's time for service work, you can trust our factory trained technicians who specialize in repairing any make or model. But don't take our word for it. Check out CapitalFordLincoln.com to see how we roll and to learn about what other customers are saying about working with us. Your dealership experience should be fun, easy, and transparent. And that's what you get when you choose Capital Ford Lincoln, Regina's trusted Ford Lincoln dealership. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. 
It is. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Should tell you, uh, just to take care of business here, the uh, Prairie Mobile text line is open. 306-840-8777. Prairie Mobile is your authorized SAS Tel Mobility dealer. And if you want to talk CFL or anything, fire us a note. We are not on Game Plus television across 10 provinces and 31 states today because of Blast Premiere. We're only streaming today. But what a shame because we got this beautiful gentleman in the studio here, Charleston Hughes of the Toronto Argonauts. How you doing, Chucky? I'm doing pretty good, man. Just, good. Just enjoying the great news. Feeling good about the season coming up. Got to get in shape. <laughs> Pull that mic in. Yeah. And you, we were just talking. I said a scout had put on Twitter yesterday. He's like, you boys better all be in shape showing up for camp. And I'm like, they've had to work for the last year. Like, what's your training reg- regimen been like? I mean, you just got to try to do what you got to do to stay in shape. You know, I'd be I'd be lying if I just said, oh, I worked out every single day of the of the entire you know break that we had for an entire year. No, it don't work like that. You got to kind of give your body time to rest. You got to kick it up, turn it down, kick it up, turn it down. So basically, I've been training periodically off and on throughout the entire pandemic besides running stairs and being creative with your workouts. But you just got to keep the legs moving, especially at my age. The young guys, they can take a year off and then come back and not lose a step for older guys like myself you got to kind of keep up with your athletic ability or you'll taper off pretty do hard. you feel better than ever i feel great yeah, yeah. i feel pretty good like i don't I, I, although I, it's a year off from being banged up but i look at it as it was a year off of mental hurt too so, <laughs> so feel refreshed a lot of like mental highs and lows you know with my career in the position I was in. So you just got to kind of figure it out the best way you can, right? Good point. Good, because everybody else has moved on, but you're still thinking about it, right? Yeah, I get it. I'm thinking about it, yeah. yeah. It's a year off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hang on. So as you know, Charleston, we like to bring in viewer participation here. So uh, John Burns is watching in Calgary, and he dropped $5 to get his chat uh, read. Glad the CFL is back this summer. Looking forward to elk season starting. <laughs> okay, okay, if not okay. this Labor Day, then Labor Day 2022. That's the thing. They're going to call it elk hunting in Calgary. You get it, right? Yeah. Shooting elk. I don't know how I feel about that name, though, man. <laughs> the elks, that's... Ah. What would you rather have had? Um, Edmonton Errors. Errors? Yeah. What is it? Like an error. Like, eh, like an error. <laughs> <laughs> You don't like Edmonton, though, right? No, not one chance. Um, <laughs> not one chance. Hang on. From Chris Bird in Toronto, welcome to Argo Nation, Charleston. Thank you. Appreciate it. How appreciate have the it, Argo fans been to you? They've been good so far, man. Yeah. I've been, I've been loving every minute of being an Argo. So I can't wait to be able to put the jersey on and really represent, you know, the brand and the team. But that's, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Darren Workman writes in, he's watching on YouTube, greetings from Salt Lake City. Never thought I would see a time when fans in the U.S. are more interested in the CFL playing than people in Canada. Tons of interest in the States. I wouldn't go that far. Over the last 24 hours, people are bouncing off the walls. What sense have you got from the fans the last day? Man, I think it's been like an explosion of, you know, the wait is over finally. And I think it's going to be a, a great opportunity for people to really get out and see a game and get out and, you know, get excited about sports and CFL football because it's been taken away. And when it's been taken away like that, you don't you appreciate it more when it comes back. Right. Did you think at any point you might have played your last game? I don't think you did. That's part of the mental highs and lows where I went. Through you thought about it, it was huh? a battle and I thought about like, man, I did not expect my career to end this way. <sighs> <laughs> like wow and i went through a, a, a hard battle a hard struggle with having to deal with i gotta keep training but i don't know what i'm training for because potentially this could be this could be it for me so like i said you it's a struggle it was a struggle for sure wow well but now <clears throat> now you're reporting to camp what did you say july 2nd you're gonna be yeah like july 2nd i'll be making my making my way out to toronto and start preparing and getting acclimated with the city and you know where to live and how the heck the where's camp mm-hmm. <laughs> don't know <laughs> i could tell you where it is <laughs> for the argos but yeah. i i i said so that hasn't been communicated to you yet 
where you're not, going? Not yet, but I'm pretty sure they got a lot on their plate too with getting stuff organized for players because you got to start figuring out how to get guys across the border and start, you know, putting stuff in line. So pretty sure it'll come around. So it's interesting. So the schedule came out this morning. I mean, I, the only thing I'd heard this morning was that the Lions were going to be playing at the Rough Riders in week one. That's it. But I guess at 10 a.m. Mountain, the whole schedule came out. Yep. And you said, what, the Riders and Argos only play once? Yeah. So if you had a look one, at it? Yeah, I already looked. September yeah. 17th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already a step ahead, so now that I saw, all right, you could check that off on a schedule and circle it, so make sure I destroy that team, and then we got Calgary week one, so destroy that team, too, How about and that? everybody else, they just fall in line. Yeah, so, so you, I'm sorry, you told me and I forgot, the game is here or Toronto? It's here, <gasps> it's uh, Chucky's return. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. What will that be like compared to your return to Calgary? Um, I think it'll be that much better, especially because everybody kind of, I think, you know, the, 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 uh, the fans of Saskatchewan kind of felt like I should be here. And it felt like it was, they seen it, they seen the situation that it was more out of my control than it, than it was. There was nothing I could do about that, a situation like that. It's a pandemic and, you know, funds are tight on one end and, you know, you, you unleash the funds for certain players, but you kind of hold it tight for other players and, Obviously, I wasn't one of those players to uh, unleash it for. So you got to move on and do what's best for me and my family, right? Can't imagine the stress that you went through, but now you know. I know. Right? And I'm still in Regina. I mean, so, I, so it, that shows that I like it here. Uh, but, but we knew that. Yeah. We knew yeah. that. Um, <laughs> from Chris Bird, he says, the Argos play the Thai Cats four times. Well, why not? Yeah. Why, obviously, you've looked at that, too. How do you feel about playing Hamilton four times? Man, whatever. I, I guess it's whatever, man. I, <laughs> yeah. don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> you just got to kind of take it for what it is. I did see that. And, like, why are we playing those, those guys so much? But I would assume that they built the schedule like that because of – Travel? Yeah, because yeah. of travel and the COVID situation. So I'm pretty sure Calgary and Edmonton are probably playing four times. Like, every team's going to play their rival maybe four times this year. Hey, Everybody's so excited to see you. So I'm going to read their comments as opposed to mine. Right? You're, you're okay right, with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, from William in Lloydminster. The fans wanted you here, Charleston, but good luck in Toronto. You knew that. Yeah. Um, from Wayne in Victoria, B.C. It's awesome to be talking CFL again. I love this league. I'm so ecstatic. From Roe Williamson. Can't wait to go to Mosaic Stadium. The drive from Saskatoon to Regina. Picking up A&W. Driving home after the game. Listening to the Green Zone. <laughs> um, Sherry Petty says, Chuck looks like a wolf in Red Black's clothing. Ooh. Okay, okay. I like, I like the sound of You weren't of thinking that, that were you? <laughs> when you no, put that on today. No, but I like the color red. It yeah, is, like does red very look good on you. It does. Yeah. What, what is that? Your, what's the sticker? Yeah, on? better with age. My eyes are bad. I couldn't see it from see, here. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should talk about that. How is the podcast going? It's going pretty good so far. Yeah, we've it's been getting it's been growing. You know, every time we drop an episode, you know, we got Brandon Banks coming on pretty soon. I heard you and Brandon Banks got some kind of <laughs> doesn't like you going on. <laughs> The, the list is growing. Yeah, yeah I know, man. It seems like every every time I start bringing somebody on my show, first it started with Bo, like Rod. Bo, yeah, Bo Levi and, you know, his feud with you. And now I'm hearing Brandon Banks got a feud with you. I'm like, man, I, I didn't even know this Did, stuff. So have you interviewed Speedy B yet? Or are you going yet. to? I'm going Are to. you going to bring this up on there? Oh, definitely. You, <laughs> definitely. Most definitely. I want to know. I Do you, I'll out. tell you what happened. Okay. It was the week of the Grey Cup the last Grey Cup, and when he won Most Outstanding Player, I said that Cody Fajardo got robbed, and I gave all these reasons why Cody should have won MVP, and Speedy B just lost his mind. And we kind of went back and forth on Twitter, and I said, this, are you that... I, didn't, I can't remember the term I said, but this is going to rattle you? That I think Cody Fajardo should be the MVP? Obviously, I'm going to think he's the MVP. Then we went back and forth because he's never won a Grey Cup. And so I put a photo of my Grey Cup rings on. I said, I can't hear you. My two Grey Cup rings are plugging my ears. And that just sent them around the bend. Ooh. And, of course, people in Hamilton are like, you're a radio guy. You're a media. It doesn't count. I said, it's trash talk, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. But still, you the get... sparks are flying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was. But it's fun stuff, Chucky. You've been doing this for years. Yeah, man. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy the banter. I enjoy the trash talk. Like, 
There's nothing nobody can no, say. No, it's just, really, uh, obviously, I know I didn't step foot on the field. That's not the point. The fact is, I got two rings. You don't. So go win one and shut me up. But I know I ain't step on the field, but I watch you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. But that's the kind of stuff that makes the CFL so much fun, obviously, right? But you just oh, yeah. interviewed the guy that the movie, not Shooter, what was the one that was based on that? American Sniper. Yes. Oh, Can yeah. you tell our viewers about that interview? Yeah, it was a great interview. Uh, we, we interviewed the, the guy who was Bradley Cooper's sidekick in American Sniper, but he was the real guy who was with the official, uh, I can't remember his name, he ended up getting murdered trying to help other guys. And it was a crazy story. You had to you had to watch the show to kind of get details about it. But it was very interesting. And he told us about his book that's called The Last Punisher and about some guy on the show that he calls that was part of his training crew. And his name was The Mad Shitter. Yeah. And I you got to watch the you show to figure yeah, out yeah, why yeah. they called him The Mad Shitter. But it's a funny story that happened in Afghanistan. Chris Kyle we're talking about, but that's not the guy. Well, obviously Chris Kyle's not alive anymore, but it was his yeah it sidekick. Was, yeah, right? it was his sidekick. Yeah. So Chris Kyle Spotter, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, from Brian Eitenauer, love Chucky. Wish you were still wearing green. Good luck in Toronto. Except the game against the Riders. The LOL Riders play Calgary three times. Uh, Nick Grant watching on YouTube says, see you in week two in Winnipeg, Charleston. That's funny. Then look at Mandy Donald talking about Speedy B blocked me during the Grey Cup last time. You saw that, huh? <laughs> you saw that. Boy, everything's coming back, and it's coming back fast. Ryan in Saratoga, New York says, what's the name of Charleston's pod? I would love to give it a listen and maybe book him as a guest on mine. Better with age, webcast. That's it. It's not hard to That's find. It. Not hard to find. Better yeah. with age, webcast. Um, I like this guy, the guy in Winnipeg. See you in week two in Winnipeg. Like, the fans are all over this. I see, I see. Yeah. Um, well, that's your thing. I remember my there, season tickets with the Riders. Oh, Johan right there. Dropped what's what's right he saying? Now. Yeah, Kevin Lace. Kevin Lace is the Navy SEAL. Navy Thanks, Seal. Johan. Glad to see you watching. <laughs> but I love what you do, Charleston. Right after the anthem... Here, and I assume you'll do it in Toronto, you would always run down to the north end zone and just go nuts, right? Oh, You're like yeah. the only guy. So have you been planned to do that, right? So it oh, yeah, kind of stands out. 100%, yeah. man. I, I like engaging with the fans. I like engaging on the sideline. Usually I'm on – if you are if you have sideline passes to be on the sideline, usually I'm engaging with every single fan, and I make sure I talk to every last person on the sideline. So it's like something that I enjoy doing, and I like pumping the crowd up. <laughs> See, I never watched when you were doing that in Calgary. I was intent on my guys. Yeah, yeah. Were you doing that in Calgary, too? 100%. From day one? From day one. So you're planning on doing it in BMO Field, too, then? 100%. <laughs> I might even run up there in the stands. I, 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 I can't I wait. This is where I got direct access, so be ready. Um, nation. Nick Grant says, 2019 champs, baby. Hashtag for the W. All those Bomber fans, they're awake today. They've woken up today. <laughs> um, look, when we come back... I want to ask you some actual football questions. And from producer Clark, he's, here's a question for you. So you think about it in the break. With all the free agent signings in Toronto, how excited is Charleston to get to camp and get to know his new D-line mates? So hold that thought. Everybody's saying you guys are buying a Grey Cup, right? You spend all the money. I think every team buys it. <laughs> Do you? Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that when we come back. We got Charleston Hughes of the Argos in studio on a very special day in the Canadian Football League. You are watching the RP show, not on Game Plus TV today, but streaming on YouTube and Facebook and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Well, when I first started playing, um, the scholarship was so important to me. Like, the f I was working two jobs. I was working at a gas station, and I used to actually line the field for the team to get paid just to make some extra money. I think for me, um, the opportunities that the scholarships provide is uh, very important, or very specifically the, the stress it alleviates for myself. The Rams give me the opportunity to buy everything that I need to get the best grades that I can and that'll lead to me getting hopefully the best job that I can in the future. There wasn't a scholarship opportunity with the Rams. Um, you know, I know that life would have been a lot more difficult for myself. 
Um, I'm not too sure exactly how much longer I would have been able to play beyond my first year. With the opportunity that they provided for me to go through school with the financial support and with the opportunity to continue to play football, um, now that I look back on it, it was the most important thing in my life. Capital is Regina's trusted GMC Buick Cadillac dealership. Whether you're on the market for a new or certified pre-owned vehicle, we got you covered. And when it's time for service work, you can trust our factory trained technicians who specialize in repairing any maker model. But don't take our word for it. Check out CapitalGMC.ca to see how we roll and to learn what other customers are saying about working with us. Your dealership experience should be fun, easy, and transparent. And that's exactly what you'll get when you choose Capital GMC. Regina's trusted GMC Buick Cadillac dealership. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old, and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now, back to the studio with Rob. Ooh, welcome back, everybody. Um, just uh, ahead of more questions with Charleston Hughes. A sports update. The Vegas Golden Knights overpowered the Montreal Canadiens last night, taking a 4-1 victory in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup semifinal series. Rookie Cole Caulfield scored the lone goal for the Habs. Trey Young had 25 points in the Atlanta Hawks edge. The Philadelphia 76ers 103-100, turning the Eastern Conference semifinal into a best of three. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George each scored 31, and the Clippers beat the Jazz 118-104. Even that series at 2-2. The Blue Jays hit 15 home runs in a four-game series at Fenway Park, but leave Boston with a split after dropping a 2-1 decision to the Red Sox. Boston's Raphael Devers hit a line drive off the left wall in the bottom of the ninth last night after Vladdy cleared it for a time drive in the top half of the ninth. Alex Verdugo drove in the first run of the night. And trainer Bob Baffert has filed suit in U.S. federal court in an effort to get a suspension by the New York Racing Association lifted. That's horse racing. The Hall of Famer was suspended in mid-May after Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit failed a post-race drug test. As a horse person told me last week, Charleston, it's not who has the fastest horse, it's who's got the best chemist. This sports update for the Tap Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store, oh, and for yes. Re- yes, you got it, and for Red Bull Canada, <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. They're shooting shooting horses with steroids. Yeah, they are now. Uh, holy! Or putting them in their oats. Yeah, but you obviously weren't following this. The winner of the Kentucky Derby tested positive for PED. He did, or his horse did. <laughs> the horse. Did. <laughs> Horse did, of oh, okay. course, of course. <laughs> and now the trainer's suspended. Yeah. So, anyways, enough about that. CFL coming back. The Toronto Argonauts buying a Grey Cup. That's what everybody's saying. They spent all this money, and uh, you like hearing that. What money? I didn't spend a lot of money, man. They just signed the right players. Yep. Yeah, they got nice championship caliber players that are willing to go balls to the wall to win a championship. 
that's what people are seeing, and they think it's just purchasing. It's not purchasing. It's the players want to play where they want to win, right? Yeah. That's what I did. I went where I wanted to win. Well, what actually happened, and you know this, is they signed like everybody. So the fans are saying, how can you afford everybody? You're getting it. What are you yeah. saying to people that say that? I mean, you can't sign, you can't sign everybody for what they want, but – Obviously, they gave everybody for what they're comfortable with. Everybody got the contract that they wanted. I don't sign. I wouldn't sign a contract that I don't like. Mm -hmm. But I signed something that I was comfortable with, and obviously, everybody was comfortable with it. So whether they overpaid or underpaid, then everybody got paid what they wanted. Yeah, but there's a little to be said for what you told me privately that Pinball got on the phone and just made you feel wanted. <laughs> like there's something to be but said I, for that. But, like he's been on our show before and. It was funny even having him on our on the Better With Days webcast and having a talk with him and slightly not tampering, but it's one of those things where it's like he's a good guy, he's a player, he knows how it feels to be a player, he knows how it feels to be a coach, he knows how it feels to be a GM. Oh, yeah, so, he's everything. Yeah, so he's been all the way across the board, so. Oh, all the Argo fans waking up from Mike Blackbird in Toronto. Argos, can't wait for you to play. I'm so excited. From the Beneath Sports podcast, this is Daryl in Toronto. Glad to have you in double blue. How excited are you to play alongside your new D-line mates, Hughes and Law, off the edge? That sounds like a law firm, Hughes and Law. There's some big names on our D-line, man, some huge names. And, you know, a couple of those guys, I, I can't wait to – you know, install my knowledge into those guys like Oakman and and, and Shane oh. Ray and guys like that. I forgot about Oakman. Yeah, we got some players that, you know, they've kind of had a rough go in their career, yeah. so they just need a little tweaking here and there to kind of figure the game out. Oakman is a beast. He's a massive man. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. massive. I've never played with somebody that big before, so it'll be... On the, D line, on the D line, you played against O lineman that big. Yeah, I played against O lineman that they never played with, like yeah. besides somebody that tall. Thinking of uh, was it Bruce Campbell? Did you play against him? Was six eight tackle? Oh yeah, I we played had against him. him. Yeah, 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 I played against him. <laughs> what a freak of nature gotta, that guy is. Got to keep his hands off. Is that right? Yeah, they can't touch me. Uh, Jacques Dupuy says good afternoon from cloudy Ottawa. Uh, we're checking out from all the uh, all the locales across North America here. People checking in, and I'll get to all your questions, or at least I'll try. Mandy in Edmonton says, "Do, do you feel it'll work out in Toronto? Even though the psychic you had on your show told you that she didn't think you were going east. How did that happen? Was she wrong? Did she miss that one? The uh, psychic? She was close. <laughs> she said she felt like I was going east somewhere like Hamilton." And, like, ah. and predicted it way beforehand and was like, yeah, I got a feeling you're going somewhere like Hamilton. She had like a one in eight chance, Chuck. Yeah, she had a one in eight chance, but that's still, <laughs> that's still big eyes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, from Joe Lazito, watching on Long Island. One of the things I'm most looking forward to with the return of the CFL is the clash of the Titans between Charleston and Derek Dennis. The games are one of the trenches with warriors like these guys. Yeah. Over to you. I love when you go up against Derek Dennis. I know, man, but he Dennis has seen like what I could do and what I'm capable of, so he he prepares himself. I think every offensive lineman in his league is gun ho to try to block me just because I'm the sack the sack master. I'm the the guy that's actively rushing for that that record right now. So they're just like I don't want him to get a sack on me. I want to be able to say I blocked the best pass rusher in the CFL. So every guy is like that. What were you Oh, are you 27 behind or something? How many? Be 27. 27. Wow. My memory's not completely shot. Yep. So you should be able to get that in a couple of years. Oh, yeah. I'll crush it. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'll crush it. Well, yeah. You weren't, you, you weren't retiring here. Um, from the fans, from Schmelsky, Tie Cat fan, watching on YouTube. Hey, Charleston, you're a legend. I wish we had you in Hamilton. You're at 105 sacks right now. Do you have you set a goal for your career? Well, I think we just covered that. You were a tight cat, though, Chucky. I was for, what? for about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, I even, didn't even tell that story, seriously. if you don't mind. Yeah, man, it was, it was a weird, weird situation because I went into Calgary to, to host like an event uh, for fans. I was taking a bunch of fans to the mountains to go snowboarding. And the day I flew into town to take all these fans on a bus to go snowboarding, 
Uh, it was the day that Huffnagel pulled me into the office and said, Charleston, I traded you. I'm glad I could just tell you this face to face. And then I was like, OK, so you brought me. I came all the way here to be Stampeder, you know, fan day. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me you traded me to Hamilton. And yeah, it was it was crazy, man. And then before I even left out of his office, he asked me, was I mad? And my phone pinged like maybe four or five times, looked at my phone. Ah, uh, don't get comfortable there. So, oh, really? <laughs> got a phone call from Hamilton, and yeah, it is what it is. Didn't work out. I don't remember what went Hamilton. No, didn't no, but love. what did they? They didn't love me. You were there ten minutes. Yeah, but they didn't love me. <laughs> right. Well, what did they? What did the riders give up for you? I apologize. I can't remember. Well, uh, Chris Vernon Adams. A case of Molson and a and a <laughs> box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> Uh, no, it was Vernon Adams and some rookie. Uh, he started in Calgary for a little bit, too. Rookie linebacker. Okay. Canadian kid. I'd have to go Google it. Yeah, yeah. I would. Uh, from Mike Blackbird in Toronto, can't wait for Juwan Breskison to go diving into the end zone for touchdowns, too. Uh, from Michael Alley, he says, Los Angeles Rams fan here says, go Argos. He's watching in Los Angeles. Randolph, uh, Randolph Zora says, Charleston, your style always reminded me of the great Dwight Freeney. Ooh. How do you feel about that? That'd be a good one to be compared Ooh, yeah, to. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> you one. take that one. To. I could take that. Have you heard that, that before? I have because of that spin move, but I try to like keep it tucked away and use it when I need it. Well, you have your favorite. <clears throat> Dip rip. Dip rip. Kind of just straight fear. Put the fear of God into him. Six right. God gets sacks. It worked. Whatever. It's See, working. <laughs> Put the fear of God into the offensive lineman. From C. Walker on YouTube. Hmm. Jefferson, Jeff Coat, Biggie, and the boys are going to be a problem on D this year again. Somebody wrote me yesterday and they said they thought the Blue Bombers were primed for a down year. I'm like, how do you figure that? They don't even get to ride the coat. They don't even have the privilege of, you know, feeling the aftermath of the Grey yeah, Cup gone. and riding it out. So, yeah, it's yeah, gone. It That's all, unfortunate. As soon as Grey Cup, boom, it went straight to a halt and pandemic started after that. So it's like they didn't even get to like ride the coattails of feeling. Well, Strebler had a good time. Well, Strebler, was, <laughs> he was having a ball. <laughs> he, yeah, he had a great 24 hours. Yeah. But he was like... <laughs> The only guy that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, we're going to do one more segment with Charleston Hughes, so we'll come back with that right after this. And on the way, Justin Duncan, Cameron Hughes. It's a Hughes day. You're watching the uh, RP show. Cousin? On YouTube. No. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) YouTube and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at uh, rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Ultimate Fan Zone, taking our show on the road coast to coast. Shop online, ultimatefanzone.ca. Slick, user-friendly, we built this site for the diehard sports fans. Jerseys, hats, team apparel, offering officially licensed fan gear from the best lines in sports. Nike, New Era, Adidas, Fanatics, game day ready to your door. Now, just a click away, ultimatefanzone.ca. Or check us out on Facebook and Instagram, UFZ Downtown Moose Jaw, home of everything authentic. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. 
If you have a working Bryant furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Comfort has always been something we as people strive for. It means that the places we live and work and that the people we care most about are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and The Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is uh, just a... Uh, we're very blessed today to have Charleston Hughes here of the Toronto oh, yeah, Argonauts. Nice to be here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you get 39? I haven't seen... Did you get 39 in Toronto? I'm hoping to get it. Who has it? Uh, rookie Canadian Smith. Oh, who's that? That's nothing. He's, he's a good player. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, okay. he's a good player. How good can he be if he's, he's a rookie? He's, he's developing. Okay. He's developing. So he got a lot of good reps, got, a, got a lot, made a lot of good plays. So Something tells me, and I may be completely off base, <laughs> but that Matt Black, I mean, he's long gone from Toronto, but didn't he wear 39 at one he time? He did. He did. That's yep, what Matt I thought. Black. And he played at Saginaw Valley, so my hometown. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And Canadian. Canadian, yeah. Uh, from John Burns in Calgary, Grey Cup 2021 in Hamilton. XFL observers will ask CFL fans, man, it's cold here in Hamilton. Your team's not here. Why are you? Are there XFL fans? <laughs> How can it be fans in their own league? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching it, but I get it. Like, who do you root for? Uh, the Tampa Bay, fan, Ta Tampa Bay Vipers. Tampa Bay Vipers. I'm a long-suffering Tampa Bay Viper fan. Oh, man. But wasn't it a Tampa Bay Viper last, se last season? There, well, yeah, because Trespin was the head coach and Jamie Elizondo was the offensive coordinator. Well, there's no league. How can you be an XFL fan? <laughs> he said it. <laughs> Not me. Can you believe how insane people went about this XFL thing this summer or this spring? Can you believe it? Oh, man, I just think it was just hype. I don't think it's going to happen. If it happens, it's going to be far down the road. I, that. I just don't see why you would bring a failing league to a to the CFL when we've had a lot of success over this over this time, and we've been a strong league for the most part over over the last you know decade or whatever century. So it's like, why would you attach yourself to a, a failing league like that? There, there's the quote. Mm. Write it down. There's the meme. How about that? From Mike Blackbird. He's sounding like a rash. LOL. Arash has been all, all over the XFL, not in a good way. Uh, Janelle Barkman says, could Charleston bring more handsome today? He's looking good. I got to say he's looking good. Thank you. Are you do you want to be up weight or down weight by the time training camp opens from what you Always are? Always down. Yeah? Always down. And are you down I, from I, a month I, ago? I usually float around 255 during the season, but I come into camp about 238, 240. How tall are you? 6-1. From Nick in Winnipeg, Charleston, is there any team you dislike playing against or a certain player? Uh, I, like, I dislike playing against any team that I'm not on. 
Really? How about that? There's not one. <laughs> there's not one more than the other. There's not one more than the other. I want to. I'll. I want to go undefeated if I could. So it's like, man, I don't care which team is. I mean, the team I like playing against the most, I like sacking Bo because he, he gets mad every time I sack him. And it's like, How about he can't that? stop it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Riley, he gets tired of seeing me all the time, too. I've touched Mike Riley a, a lot. Do you so, talk to him? Uh, yeah, fi- I talk to him. And you, he knows it every time. But I've, I've come in contact with him a lot. So it's just certain players. Like, I think. Vernon Adams is a is a guy that I'm I'm looking forward to getting my hands on, just because he's just so athletic and hard to get, and he's hard to get. Did you play against to. Manziel? I did. What do you think of him? He's funny. He's funny. He was probably by far the funniest quarterback I've ever had to play against, just because it was a couple times where I almost sacked him and he got away, and then he come running back to the huddle and run past me and was like, "Whoa, you almost got me right there!" <laughs> and I'm looking like, "Man, what's wrong with this dude?" <laughs> Like, but he's quick, though. But he's quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he'll throw an out route and go like, whoo, that was a good pass. And then just start clapping like, man, what are you doing? I tell you what, I was on the sidelines in Tennessee watching the Titans and the Jaguars, and it was Mariota versus uh, Blake Bortles. And I'm like, Johnny Manziel is just as good as these guys. Like, I don't understand why he's not. Well, I do understand why he's not. Yeah. But you know what I mean. No, he's a, he's a player. He is a player. He's definitely a player. He just got a... I don't know. Straight now. We yeah, all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know. <laughs> yeah, tread water lightly. I don't want to talk about him like that because he's a good guy. I think he's a tremendous guy. Yeah. Believe me, I get him. But yeah. it's kind of sad that he's playing in the fan control football league this year, you know? Yeah, and I forgot about that league. Why, why aren't you a fan of that league? I'm a fan of it. Oh, yeah. I watched it every week. Are you kidding me? Really? Every week. I didn't see one game. I'm um, trying to think who my friends were. Well, you know Khalil Carter because you had yeah, him in Montreal yeah. or Calgary. He was a coach there. Drew Tate's a coach in the league. Oh, Why are they telling me and not you? These... So is what I know. <laughs> uh, Don Unamba. Who else, Clark? The president, Don Unamba, was coaching yeah. in that league. Oh, well, you... John Jenkins. John Jenkins. but he's before... uh Six, I think. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was fun. And where the fans would write in and call the plays. <laughs> it was, like, unbelievable. Oh, I wouldn't advocate yeah. it for you. You're doing just fine here. But yeah. Josh <clears throat> Josh Gordon signed by the end of the year. I think he played a couple of games. And, and Manziel was in it, too. Um, hey, just on the bow thing, you said here, this is already being live tweeted by the ex, the uh, count CFL News, Bo Levi Mitchell. I like sacking him because he gets mad every time. How many times have you sacked him? Uh, at least 20. Seriously? Yeah. You've got 105? 130. 130 sacks and 20 of them are on boat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you, pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm like 15, almost 20 sacks I've got on boat. Wow. I didn't see you talk about that in your podcast interview with him. Yeah, it's just some stuff you just can't talk about it, man. Bo, Bo's my guy. He's still my <laughs> boy, man. We got to go off together still. He loves me. Does he still love me? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, oh, I, don't, I think he dropped it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I really do. I'm ready to so drop long it. Ago. So yeah, long I know. Ago. Yeah, just let it go. From Troy in Toronto, <laughs> only on the RP show, would I get an in-depth interview with Charleston and an Argo at that live interview too? Good stuff. Well, thank him because he's the guy that did it. One more plug with Better with Age. What, what do you got going on? I was about to say. I remember seeing this uh, sober athletic gear. Is that what? Uh, who was wearing that hockey? Uh, f- f- your I was wearing it. Fleur. Mark andre Fleury? I think he had a hat on from there. Well, there you go. See, Troy? Yeah, You're getting famous. It. I remember seeing that hat. There yeah. you go. Sober athletic wear. It's awesome. All right, Charleston. We'll let you roll. Thanks for coming in. This has been fun. Thanks. Good luck this year. Oh, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Justin Dunk next hour and Cameron Hughes from Las Vegas. It's the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio at RodPeterson.com. Theo Fleury. <laughs> I'm forgetting That's people right. name. Memory. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators 
uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Ford Lincoln, we don't just sell vehicles, we buy them too. You know how we always have such a big inventory with an amazing selection? That's because we buy all makes, all models, and all years. We're going to give you the best price every time, and you don't even have to buy from us. All you have to do is visit us online or in store, answer a few questions about your vehicle, and we'll get you a great offer. We'll even cut you a check on the same day. So save yourself the hassles of selling privately and sell it to us, because at Capital Ford Lincoln, we'll buy it. Stars, you're dispatched to a scene call. The patient has multiple traumatic injuries and is unconscious but breathing. This is why I back the Stars Lottery. Stars, we can accept the mission. This is why I'm all in. Have a safe flight. The prize is the great. The cause is critical. Stars Lottery. The lottery on a mission. Every ticket is your chance to win over $4.2 million in prizes. Buy yours at starslottery.ca or 1-844-STARS-SK. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Right now, here we go, the breaking news. The CFL Board of Governors votes unanimously to begin a shortened 14-game season on August 5th. How about that? We're going ahead. We're opening training camp. We're going to kick off August 5th. They're doing what's best for the league. They're doing what's best for the game. They're doing what's best for their players and staff. They're moving ahead. So bravo to them. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is. Welcome to uh, the second half kickoff, everybody. Producer Clark telling me that Justin Dunk is just logging in. So we will get to the... Uh, CFL insider king in a moment. This has been a very fun show, obviously. Charleston Hughes just leaving the building now. He's signing the wall downstairs. That DuPont's got him down there, so I don't know when Darren's going to rejoin me, but holy smokes. Did Charleston Hughes just light a bunch of fires and just walk away? It's, it's what he does. It's what we do. Um, Craig Campbell watching in downtown Toronto, or he might be in his home in the GTA says uh, quality segment with the sack master Charleston Hughes. I mean, there's another thing that you got to watch when this season kicks off. And that is Charleston Hughes, 27 sacks away from being the CFL's all time sack King. How can you not cheer for a guy like that? John Ohm watching in Winnipeg. Ohm. name change for the Winnipeg jets and moose arena. The fans need to come up with a nickname for the arena and stick to that. 
Good call. It's my sixth point from the quick six, and that is they are changing the name of the arena in downtown Winnipeg to Canada Life Center from Bell MTS Place, which they called the phone booth Canada Life Center. I don't know. Moose has joined me here. What would be your nickname for the Canada Life Center? It's not exactly vibrant. The CLC. The CLC. Yeah, I know. We need something, right? I Canada love, Life Center. I love, by the way, just ahead of Justin Dunk, who I also love, but you get in your car to leave from here in the sweatpants capital and drive to now the Canada Life Center because I've done it. Okay. Do you know what the GPS says? Please drive 505 miles and turn right. <laughs> it's literally straight shot, right turn. It, that's what it is. There's no coming in over and over pass, exiting here, turning there. Please drive 505 miles and turn right, and you'll arrive at your destination. <laughs> okay. That's incredible. Do we have him? All right. Big day. Justin Dunk joining us here from Three Down. What do you got, man? Were you pointing oh, at the screen? Your buddy, Troy, Sober Athletic Wear, says we'll call it the defibrillator. <laughs> That's good. I really yeah, like that. that. It's not bad. Thank you, Troy. All right. Joining us from Three Dunk Nation, uh, Justin Dunk. And, Matt, have you stopped smiling, Justin, since the unanimous vote yesterday? And uh, happy days are here again? Honestly, it feels weird, Roddy. Like, to be talking about actual football after, what, over five or 600 days without it, it just doesn't feel quite normal yet. It doesn't, but I got over it fast, especially with Charleston Hughes sitting in here just dropping bombs. You see the quotes that he was dropping the last hour? Man, I love that guy. Straight fire. Let's get him the sack record, man. Give him whatever juice and energy he needs. I don't see any reason why he can't hit 27 sacks to become the CFL's all-time leader. What do you think? Me either, man. He's still going strong. At his age 27 for him, that could be one epic season or a couple mediocre ones for Charleston. Yeah, so the schedule came out today, and we've got fans from every team writing in here today. The Argos, I guess, play the Ticats four times. Fans of both teams are excited about that. The Lions are in here in week one. What struck you with the announcement of the schedule this morning? Anything stand out? Not really. I mean, we knew what week one was going to look like, Roddy. You had the Riders opening game against the BC Lions. To me, some of the intricacies that stand out, like let's say, for example, the Ottawa Red Blacks don't play the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Key storylines there with Matt Nichols, the quarterback who was kind of with Toronto, obviously in 2020, but never played for them. And then Paul Lapolice, the offensive coordinator, going to be the head coach there. So we won't have that storyline in 2021 but a lot of factors here obviously with COVID-19 the Red Blacks have a bit of a funky schedule where they have some midweek games a Tuesday game I believe in a couple Wednesday games but you got to do what you got to do to get football back on the field so at least we're talking about actual football. Hey JD how much are you hearing about roster sizes because that's you know we're talking to football guys and I was talking to a couple of guys uh, connected to the league yesterday and they're worried about injuries right guys haven't been in contact situations for you know a couple of years now it's it's starting to you know will that be a factor right more injuries will they increase practice roster sizes what are you hearing in that? Well, they're talking about initially how many guys are going to be able to bring to training camp, which I think will kind of get pared down to what you're talking about there, Dupe. So 100 was the initial number. I know there was some talk of cutting down to 75 because it could potentially save you some money in terms of the guys having to quarantine up here and the teams having to pay for that. So that's still being debated. It sounds like there's going to be expanded practice rosters and people are going to have to adjust and I mean football people their ready list for maybe guys that are in Canada depending on what happens with the U.S. Canadian border what are the uh, hiccups the rest of the way I mean we know how the CFL operates it's not probably entirely different than a lot of other leagues because there was no handbook in the pandemic but I mean Charleston just said he's like I don't know where training camp is right he just <laughs> there's a lot of loose ends here left after the vote yesterday so what needs to be tied up to get onto the field into training camp and then kick off August 5th First of all, all those details, you know, need to get out to the players as it currently stands in the memo that we have up at Three Down Nation from Solomon El and the PA president, is that all the players and, you know, coaches and the staffs are going to have to do a seven-day quarantine 
before they get to Canada, a seven day quarantine when they arrive. Now, that might change because the CFL is trying to get the same NHL exemption that they had for the trade deadline. So potentially that gets truncated and smaller in size. But in terms of the details overall, it's going to be very much like NFL training camps. And the example I've been using is what we saw in hard knocks last year, where the players and coaches and personnel guys are going to convene for practices and they'll be on the field together. But outside of that, it's largely going to be zoom meetings. So as far as what they need to figure out is all of these logistics, man, like I was saying for a while, there's no season until travel is being booked. So that travel right now is frantically being put together staffs are being rehired on the business side on the football operations side even medical staffs training staff so all those types of things are going on right now and the timeline is shrinking for it but hey at least we're talking about football it seems absolutely frantic how could how couldn't it be right so many staff were laid off in all this and and i get it and i have faith that they're going to pull it off um there are a lot of people Insiders still saying, I'll believe it when I see it kick off August 5th. Uh, and I'm still kind of that way. I'm trying to be positive. But for all the reasons you just outlined, it's not going to be easy. There's no doubt. Um, how confident are you that they pull it off August 5th? I'm fairly confident. I know the timeline is short. There's some people that are worried about that. But the CFL wouldn't come out and say, yes, we voted and are going ahead with it and all of a sudden hit the pause button. It just wouldn't look good from a public relations standpoint. So my confidence is fairly high. I do think there are a lot of things that are going to be done on the fly. But on the flip side of that, and to be fair to the league, they've been talking with the provincial governments for a long time, the local governments in each city and even the federal government. So they have a rough idea of the framework they're going to follow along and i'll use the example of the canadian elite basketball league they had their summer series in ontario and st Catharines last summer and i was down there and it was very simple they followed the protocol so as much as people kind of get lost in the details a little bit you just have to follow the protocols as an individual and the event i think can end up going off without a hitch now that was a little different because it was just a tournament and there wasn't necessarily travel among different cities but it was very smooth there no one was panicked you know they of course were cleaning the locker rooms cleaning the courts there so it'll be very similar in my mind to what goes on for the cfl to operate wayne and victoria asks are there going to be any preseason games how's this going to look uh, when we get nope. going here no preseason games. We'll have the training camp, obviously, starting July 10th and then leading into the kickoff on August 5th, which will be the Ticats and the Bombers in Winnipeg. And to be quite honest, Roddy, one of the things that insiders were talking about, and you sort of mentioned it off the top of dupes, is, well, are we going to have a lot of injuries or is the football going to be sloppy? I'll point to the NFL in 2020, right? They didn't have any preseason games. They did their training camps, and they had the highest scoring season in NFL history now some people might tell you that was due to sloppy tackling but i think up here we're not going to complain if there's a bunch of points being scored so i think the combination of the athletes having the extra time off to really seriously rehabilitate their bodies feel fresh for maybe the first time ever in their football careers because you think of it in a normal season you end it in november you know most teams are obviously earlier in that month and later in the month but still you kind of have a couple months of recovery. Then you got to get back training and you might not be able to get your body really, truly, fully healthy again. So the fact that this year off has helped these athletes recuperate past 100%, like Bobby Levi Mitchell talked about, you know, working on different sides of his body and really evening everything out, which he hasn't had time to do in a normal season. So I think, to be quite honest, I'm going to go against the grain. We could see a high caliber of football, especially offensively, because these guys have been in their playbooks and still training at a high level. I was stunned at how efficient and crisp the NFL play was last year, beginning with week one, for all the reasons that you said. Very impressed. But they're pros. Probably shouldn't have been surprised. And I feel the CFL is no different. Viewers still uh, checking in with suggestions for the new rink, a nickname in Winnipeg, which has been renamed today the Canada Life Center. Chris in <laughs> Toronto says, the money pit. What do you think, dupes? I could get into From it. From Tacona Pauli. Could you get into the rink? I could get into that. From Tacona Pauli in Winnipeg, the CLC Center, Heartbeat House, the heartbeat of Canada. Ooh. Not bad. Not bad. That's good. Not bad. 
Jen from the Four Seasons says, do we know how many fans are going to be allowed or at all? Saw the report on SportsCenter uh, this morning saying that they don't have any approval for crowd sizes yet in any venue in the, across the CFL. So what do you know about that, Justin? They don't, but if we go around the provinces real quickly, right? Jason Kenney expects the stadiums to be at full capacity in August when the season opens. The BC Lions are hoping for 5,000 fans for their first game at BC Place when that occurs. In Saskatchewan, you know the provincial government there and Scott Moore are going to want to get as many people as they safely can get in Mosaic Stadium for when the riders open up against the Lions. So I would imagine that will be a solid capacity. Winnipeg President Wade Miller has been kind of quiet in terms of not putting a number out there for what he expects for the opener. But I would imagine that we'll see some sort of fans there at IG Field. And then in Ontario, it's going to be largely based on how quickly we can get into step three. But because the East team is specifically the ones in Ontario. Their schedules are front loaded with those West games. And I think by the time Labor Day gets here, I believe it's Monday, September 6th, that we'll have a solid amount of fans in the stands in Ontario for the Ticats and Argos rivalry. Outstanding report, Justin. Uh, give a plug for three down, if you don't mind, to our viewers. You bet. Three Down Nation got all the goods there, Roddy. And I'll say one key thing in all of this, because the big thing to me, and I want to make sure I get this in there, in terms of the vote going from no in 2020 to yes in 2021, and there's been a lot of Argo bashing out there, so I feel like we got to even it out. Toronto President Bill Manning was involved with the Player Relations Committee. He wasn't in 2020. So I think the fact that one of the higher-ups with the Argos, one of the suits, we'll call them, was involved in that process with the players and really saw how it all played out, turned the tide there. So I just wanted to note that and get that little bit of news. I haven't put that out anywhere, so that's one just for you boys on the show. Outstanding stuff. I appreciate you coming on today, my man. We'll chat down the road. You bet, guys. Get ready for some football. Break out the yeah, rec laws. So, yeah, so nice to talk about it. Thanks, J.D. The CFL's number one insider, Justin Dunk from 3downnation.com, joining us from the Hammer. We're going to Vegas next. You're not going to want to miss this. Cameron Hughes joining us. I can't wait. I know, me either. It's the RP Show. Episode number 506 of Canada's daytime sports talk show continues after this. Game Plus Television, YouTube, and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports radio. For Suds, full service car wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Suds Car Wash, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence 
to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say. And I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding area since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Laid back and kicking it. Let's head back to the studio. Here's Rob. <laughs> hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's a great day. 24 hours into realizing that the CFL is going to play this year. We've had Charleston Hughes on today of the Toronto Argos. I don't want the Argos to get nervous, but we almost lost Chucky for the season. Like falling off the ladder? <laughs> yeah. So we had him get like, the marker here. We've got a bat like up in the rafters of the of the hallway we got these two, couple of banners brett lather's got one charleston Thank hughes you. has one and he had to sign it lather signed his what a year ago and so charleston's up there and he's he's a lot bigger than brett is so i'm holding the ladder it's wobbling there was one time it creaked i'm like if you fall like i'm not taking responsibility for you missing the season charleston thank heavens but he didn't he's, he's light good. on his feet oh yeah so oh, speaking of light on his feet i was just showing charleston hughes a video of cameron hughes last night at t mobile arena i was cameron let's go down to sin city now as we cheer for canada's team the vegas golden knights we're ready to roll i just said <laughs> to darren it's not the easiest interview with cameron hughes it's literally like just go cam Go. Go. <laughs> Bro. What's My up? Uh, you tell me. How are you? Where are you from? Canada. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Who are you cheering for? The Vegas Golden Knights, Canada's team. Or as my friend last round would say, hey, Alexa. <laughs> Let's go. Well, well, yeah, hey. But listen, you go. What do you got for me today, Cameron? Just go. What do you got? Well, I, I can't talk. Um, I can't walk. My my ankles and my throat, I was icing them all night. Last night was off the charts. The city's just going from here to here to here. Um, and Vegas is rocking. It was uh, unbelievable last night. I mean, from the, the, the minute they did the intros to the anthems. By the way, how great was it to hear a Canadian anthem? Like, with a full arena, right? Are you kidding me? And then yeah. I did my intro. I did my little bit. that I, I said, my name's Cameron. I'm from Canada. I cheer for the Golden Knights, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> uh, the crowd loved it, and we just rocked the house. Well, I was listening to NHL radio this morning, and my good buddy John Rosen was on there, L.A. guy, but was in Vegas, and he said, Vegas brought back the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. They were the first one, man. It's kind of what you're saying here, right? So that's, got, that's a, another feather in the cap for the Golden Knights, I would say. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was there was a great article talking about how many Canadian guys play on the team. Uh, four of them are from Quebec. It's always been, you know, since the second game I felt the Chicago Blackhawks were in town. They had 4,000 fans at the game rod. And since then, Vegas has been the hospitality city for the NHL. And the way they're able to turn it up, the way they're able to push it, the way they're able to take the experience. And, you know, it is like a nightclub in there sometimes. But the fans want it, right? The fans want them to be want to be pushed. And um, I, I'll be the first to admit, the the first game I did back, I was sitting in the crowd and I was wearing a hazmat suit with a with a, mm. with a gas mask. The, the 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 video pants to everyone, and there I am sitting there, and I get up, I rip off the, the mask, and everyone's like, "All right, let's go! It's it's go time!" And I got so many really thoughtful notes after that because people were saying. You know, it wasn't about me, but it was about the idea that you're allowed to be have fun again, right? We're allowed to get into the 
allowed to be a little crazy. So, I mean, it was just electric. The goosebumps, if I'm ever down, I'll just think of that moment. Hey, so on your tweet the other night from that game, you had a picture of you and Leanne Horning Wright. I was with her brother, Brad Horning, just the other day. He's a Pats legend. His number's retired by the team. And I said, yeah, we had a mutual friend, Cam and I, your sister, Brad. He's like, oh, yeah, Cam, that guy's nuts. I'm like, (laughs) he's been called worse, right, Cam? Well, you know what, Rod? You know what it comes back to that is the sense of community that sports, you know, and, and I'm, by the way, I'm so excited for the CFL because, I mean, when I think of the CFL, I was an eight-year-old kid sitting at the game with my dad, and I remember saying, I can get the crowd going like that guy. There was some guy in the crowd, and it brings people together in a, a really special way. In Vegas, like, there's fans from everywhere, and I've met friends from Canada, from Europe, and from all over the U.S. that have moved to Vegas, and or fans visiting last night. I had people come up to me. They were like, hey, didn't you go to Bishop's University? I've seen you in Calgary, Edmonton. I've seen you in Red Deer. I've seen you in Brandon. And it just unites us in a really cool way. Unites. There you go. There's the plug. With a K. Yes. Yeah. Coming to a game, by the way. When I yeah we'll get you when I think of the you and the CFL I think of you splitting your pants at the 08 Grey Cup but we're here to talk about <laughs> we're here to talk about the Golden Knights here and uh, Tacona Pauli in Winnipeg's watching he says Rod not sure Vegas is my favorite team but how about that flurry best and nicest guy in the NHL my favorite for sure flower power Cam. You said in your book you've got like a residency with the Vegas Golden Knights. So be- explain that first – or sorry, first explain some of the players for the Golden Knights that we're falling in love with on a nightly basis and how this came about, your relationship with them, please. Yeah, I, I was – you know, I've been performing for years at events all over the place, and Kerry Buboltz, who's the team president, was in charge of the Cavaliers, and Johnny Greco, who's the head of entertainment, was with the Cavs at one point, and then they brought the team together – and they called me before there was even a logo and said, hey, do you want to come here? Because, I mean, let's be fair. No one had any idea that the team was going to be that good. And it was going to, you know, galvanize the city in such a you know, cool way. Um, obviously, a tragic way at the beginning. But I, they booked me for 22 games at the beginning of the season. They even were about to offer me a, um, an exclusive contract. So I was there from the first exhibition game to the, you know, the powerful game on um, the 10th of October after the tragic shooting. And I've been I've been in people's homes. Uh, you know, I've met fans here from across North America. They have me to their homes to watch the games. I went to a friend's home the other day, and I did laundry while I was there. And they made me a nice steak dinner. And I jumped to the pool after Vegas won. Everyone's like, "You live here now?" I'm like, "I, I don't know. I should." Um, <laughs> Vegas is like a hospitality town, right? When you come here, people want to make you feel great, and uh, I think it's something that people have really bought into. Uh, Dan, the Jets fans watching in Winnipeg, he says, was Cam the guy that strips off T-shirts and throws them into the crowd? No, Cam is the guy that strips off T-shirts. It's <laughs> not was. Um, Darnell Theros, one of our great sponsors here, he sponsors the Rock Star of the Day every day. We have T-shirts that we give to our Rock Star of the Day. He says, we should have sent Cameron 10 Rock Star of the Day shirts for him to do his thing. We still can. We're going to the Stanley Cup Finals, so we can still do that, Dar. Uh, yeah, he is a fantastic. Well, I should run up and down the strip with them, Rod. I just go up and down the strip with them. You know, literally, get it? <laughs> That's yeah, absolutely. That's good. Um, I mean, am I, am I a college degree grad or what? Honestly. <laughs> Bishops, uh, Darnell. By the way, hey, Arash Madani was on here last week, and I mentioned the fact that you guys are both Gator alum. Um, where am I going here? There's a lot of comments have come in. Darnell, by the way, has recruited his nephew. He is a member of the. Uh, what do we call it? Knights Nation, Canada's team. Yeah, they're all buying merch up here for the Golden Knights. Mark Zosel in Melfort says, I wish I was in Vegas. How was the crowd? Were they Jack for the pregame intros? Yeah, they were. I mean, they did a new intro. That's the cool thing about Vegas is they don't just, you know, keep recycling, you know. Some teams do. Sure, every team does. But they didn't last night and they did a whole new intro. Uh, and then when the lights came down, everyone had these – Glow sticks and the Elvis head, and it was just Mark Chinook from you know obviously from Canada as the in-game host, and he's phenomenal. He gets the tone going, and what I love about it is the players like are always like, "What are they going to do next?" You know what I mean? The players are responding to what's happening, you know, in the stands. So, you know, uh, the crowd was electric. I mean, look at the end of the day, there's you know this and all these hockey games, the playoffs. There's moments where the crowd is actually dead because they're so nervous watching the game. 
And when Montreal tied it up, the crowd kind of went, oh, oh, what happened? And then from there, you know, blew it off the, you know, I think the wave went around uh, 10 times. I've never seen that in Vegas. It was crazy. That's funny. Um, Kelly McCrimmon actually told me that. He says they've caught their players in a timeout going. Yeah. Did right. you see the one last, Rod, did you see the one last game? My my buddy, the night and I, we got the wave going, and Robin Leonard started doing it. Did you see yes. that video? <laughs> yes, I did. And I saw he threw his hat on the ice too, uh, Leonard. He's he's something. But, you know, you mentioned what you're doing. The media has told me they're not allowed to be, be around the players at all. So I would assume this year you're not. But in the past, have you? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of just go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really, you know I me. Mean? I have no filter. I, I'll walk through the players like thing and say hi to Marcia so flurry. I love running into flurries. I, I don't know him that well, but when I've met him, he's just, he always loves to critique my dance moves at the, at the, uh, after the games. It's the funniest thing. He even has a quote in my book here uh, about how it keeps him going and, and, and laughing during the games. So I was like, Mark Andre, you should be focused. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? La la, mon ami, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, way, by the way, your dance moves, 25 years you've been doing this, Cam, and you're still talking about your dance moves. Like, are you going to get some new ones? I wouldn't think after 25 years you're changing anything. Rod, here's the thing. I could go and become the best dancer. Nobody, nobody has any idea how hard it is to dance on stairs that go like this with 18,000 people watching you in 60 seconds and you got to hit hit it. You know what I mean? Uh, the last game I did, everybody danced now and I kind of showed my you know agility <laughs> on the stand. But otherwise, it's just about moving and getting people energized. Do you? Do should it. I do it? Can you do this, Cam? Like, have you got any of these? Show us some moves here. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. good. I've never done it before. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. I've never done it till now. I swear to God. Um, and now, dare. By the way, let's just start the chase with the CFL coming back. Am I going to finally do a right? Or, uh, come to Saskatchewan, do a game. Talk to the powers that be, man. I, I, I can't believe that you haven't been here. But hey. The Rush Nation's coming back, by the way, and uh, the Saskatchewan Rush and their results. I know you're. That's where we didn't meet there, but that's the last time I saw you in person was at a Rush game. You were right over my shoulder. Yeah, and that's the last time we felt something, right? Exactly. The energy. Yeah, exactly. Um, Hey, you mentioned your book. Do you have a copy? Do you want to hold it up and just talk about how that's gone? This book. Yeah. Oh yeah, I happen to have a couple. Do you want to sign? I'll sign some for some of your guests if they want to. Want to do a little trivia thing? I'll, I'll give some to you, some of your uh, uh, viewers. That'd be great. That would be amazing. Yeah, Darren's I mean, like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. How, how's that? I love the book. I told you I couldn't put it down. I read it in just a couple of days. How's that gone for you? Well, it was a great idea to launch it during the pandemic and the U.S. election. I thought it was perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? November, December was really great. To be fair, uh, people were really into it. It was fun. January, February kind of went down. And then March, people's spirits were picking up. And I've done a lot of great events with it. And, you know, I, I, I said this to you guys a while ago, to, to you and Darren, like, I want to do a Cross Canada tour with this book. I want to bring cheer across Canada. I want to stop in every arena that I've ever been to uh, and, and kind of raise the spirits of Canada, you know, best I can. It's just, well, the best thing I would say is to follow you on social media and write you through there to get the book, correct? Or how would you suggest people purchase yeah, it? Yeah, go to CameronHughes.tv or, uh, you know, like I said, if you wanted to do any prize giveaways for your audience, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, hey, here we go. Darnell says, a Rush game is where we can do the Rockstar shirts. They're big sponsors of the Saskatchewan Rush. No, I think Darren and I should hand deliver those t-shirts down to Vegas. What do you say? Yeah, I'm in for that. I think we should then host the pool party together with all the Canadians, hey, guys. Works for me. <laughs> exactly. I got, some, I got some great stories about Vegas pool parties, by the way, but uh, none yeah, that I've hello. had. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that I've made with you, Cam. Hey, uh, so you're going to be there through the rest of the playoffs? What's your skid? Well, you know, it's funny. It's kind of like gambling. You don't know what's, you know, if they win, you stay. If they lose, you, you know, you take a break. Uh, I used to do a lot of NBA in between. So we'll see, you know, I'll be there on Wednesday and then I'll go take a pit stop somewhere and, um, and then, and see if they come back for game five or not. But yeah, yeah. I, I've been, basically they've said you're here for every game for the rest of the series. And if they make it to the next round. Oh, wonderful. Well, and by the way, if you don't mind me spilling the tea on this, you mentioned that the president, Kerry Bubal, said to you, don't go dying on me. So, obviously... He came up to me after the first game. 
I was so excited. I mean, Ron, you know, we, we've chatted 459 days since I've done a game. And fans were like, is he, what's going on? What is he, what? Is he okay? <laughs> and the president grabbed me and says, don't die on me tonight. <laughs> were you at another oh, level? A higher level? level? Yeah. So I what wasn't happened? there last night because the crowd didn't need it. But the last three games, uh, I was at another level. I was just hanging off railings, throwing popcorn, jumping on people. People were lifting me up, throwing me in the stands. It was magical. <laughs> oh, well, it seemed that yeah, way. And I just, and yeah. Well, I told Darren I that I was here for the Virgin opening, the, the Virgin Las Vegas Hotel, the new, it used to be the Hard Rock. So we had Richard Branson here. So I had to compete against him. So I had to really turn it up another level. Oh, I'm sure you won. But I said to Darren that I texted you. This is the relationship that Cam and I had. When there was the, the wave the other night, I texted him. I said, did you start the wave? Do you remember what you said? <laughs> Uh, you, don't ask dumb questions. You, you, you said, <laughs> is this a serious question? <laughs> of course he's yeah. done it that way. <laughs> That's what it was. That's his job. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, are you hoping well, there's a... Because you would never start the wave at four, you know, at three all uh, at the game like uh, against Colorado on the first Friday night. But they were winning by like three or four goals. And of course, the Vegas fans were, were, were you know, chirping on Twitter about, oh, I don't like the wave. I'm like, did you see how cool the wave looked last night when it went around mm. 10 times and they're up like by four goals? I mean, the crowd was like, that's that's when you celebrate, you know? It was yeah. amazing. I, I saw some stuff on Twitter. They're like, the wave is stupid. I'm like, if you don't like the wave, you're a horrible person. How can you not like the way, right? Hey, last one. So you're full on Vegas. Yeah, so, you're, so you want a sweep to happen here? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I, grew, up, I, I grew up in Ottawa. My first j- jersey was a Bob Gating, number 23. I used to go to the Forum as a kid. I obviously have a, you know, I, I love the Habs, but, you know, v- Vegas has truly been in my blood since day one. I, I've been part of this community and, you know, it, yes, I get paid and I make a living doing this, but I, I truly love this team and I, I love that I've been able to be part of this community. And you know, you guys, you've been here, you get it, right? And it's a whole other level. It is, but you wouldn't know unless you went. And hey, one more. He was in elementary school with Justin Trudeau, same grade. Any quick stories? Shh. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> we'll talk about him once he lets me cross the border. Yeah, no kidding, right? Okay. Cam, thanks, buddy. We're a part with him, like a case of poutine versus like a pool party or something in Vegas, you know? Yeah, well, he's he's not going to win, right? So you'll be collecting on that bet. Cam, love you, buddy. <laughs> Keep it up. Great to see you guys. Let's be go. Great. See you great. Let's, Let's go. Go, night. <laughs> go Knights, go everything. The great Cameron Hughes checking in from Sim City. Uh, he is the best. The best. And we got questions coming in on his book and so forth. So we'll answer those when we come back. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Well, when I first started playing, um, the scholarship was so important to me. Like, I was working two jobs, I was working at a gas station, and I used to actually line the field for the team to get paid just to make some extra money. I think for me, um, the opportunities that the scholarships provide is uh, very important, or very specifically the, the stress it alleviates for myself. The Rams give me the opportunity to buy everything that I need to get the best grades that I can, and that'll lead to me getting hopefully the best job that I can in the future. There wasn't a scholarship opportunity with the Rams. Um, you know, I know that life would have been a lot more difficult for myself. 
Um, I'm not too sure exactly how much longer I would have been able to play beyond my first year. With the opportunity that they provided for me to go through school with the financial support and with the opportunity to continue to play football, um, now that I look back on it, it was the most important thing in my life. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Suds Car Wash, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Oh yeah, he's back. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. I'm back. <laughs> I'm strangling myself with headphone cord. Put the camera on him for a second. Come on, over here. The bane of my existence. I know it is, getting that thing all worked out. You, we, know, you have no idea how much time we spend clipping them in and getting the cords in. It's like, you know, getting the uh, astronauts suited up to go to space. It's like you got to check every little. Well, the thing is, I don't sit here for two solid hours. I get up and run around. I went up and filled my water, and I yep. get back in here, and I got to rewire myself. Anyways, uh, that was a great interview with Cameron Hughes. Uh, I tell you, man, I'm getting my second vac shot next week. You get yours, what, Thursday, you mm -hmm. said? I might be making plans for us to go to the Stanley Cup final. I'm eligible on Thursday. I see no reason why I wouldn't go get it. Hey? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm eligible next week. Um, hang on one sec. Oh, there's some questions about Cameron Hughes' book. And I'm going to tell you, you want to read it. And it's called King of Cheer. We promoted it before. It's his story of 25 years, his story in this business of, of sports where he's a professional fan. He's the first guy really doing it. He is this generation's Crazy George, which he'll tell you. And it's stories of not just hanging out with LeBron James and Marc-Andre Fleury, like you said there, but going down to El Paso, Texas, to a <laughs> Western Pro Hockey League game and riding in a cab with a cow. Do you, know what I mean? like, do you know what I mean? And breaking his leg, falling off a rail, and how the Raptors almost fired him because he didn't listen to their rules. Like, it's, un it's unbelievable. It's just a wild ride. And the way how you see how he talks, he's just like, eh, all the time. Oh, yeah. When you read it, that's, you could, that's how you hear like it. It's like he's telling yeah. you that, yeah, it's like that. It's so good. Energy. Um, everybody's talking about the new arena name in Winnipeg. I, I get, I don't get caught up in arena names. Right? It doesn't really matter to me. A rink's a rink, but whatever. I can see how certain people do. Oh, yeah. So as of this morning in Winnipeg, it's now Canada Life Center. No longer Bell MTS Place, and they used to call it the phone booth. So from Ryan in uh, <laughs> New York, he says, considering Canada Life is a financial company, the nickname of the Canada Life Center should be the Winnipeg Point of Interest. 
E. Is, I, 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 I get it. I just don't think it's funny. How about that? Canada Life is an insurance company, is it not? I thought yeah. it was. Yeah, I think so. So it's not rolling off the tongue just yet, Canada Life. But not quite. Somebody said the defibrillator. People were calling it the money pit. They'll come up with something. The Blue Jays are back in Buffalo to open a three-game series against the Yankees tonight. Toronto lefty Hinjin Roo is expected to take the mound today. And Jordan Montgomery is set to start for New York. The Jays are coming off a 2-1 loss to the Red Sox in Boston. They split four there. It's a 5:07 Mountain first pitch. The Lightning look to even up the Stanley Cup semifinal series when the Islanders visit Tampa tonight. New York took game one Sunday. Thanks to goals from Matt Barzell and Ryan Pulak. Uh, Habs defenseman Joel Edmondson says his team simply took too many penalties in their 4-1 loss to Vegas last night. He says the infractions gave the Golden Knights the momentum after the Habs put in a solid performance in the first period. Golden Knights up 1-0. Game 2 goes Wednesday in Sin City. Another star is set to be missing from the Nets lineup as Brooklyn looks to regain its series lead over the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA. Kyrie Irving won't play tonight after spraining his right ankle in Game 4 Sunday. The Nets will also be without James Harden, who hasn't played since the early minutes of Game 1 due to hamstring tightness. Two games on the schedule as Group F action gets underway at the Euros. Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal will take on Hungary in Budapest in the opener. Later, Karim Benzema and France will face Germany in Munich. This sports update for dubnetwork.ca, your number one source for Western Hockey League breaking news and analysis with the best team of writers across Western Canada and the Pacific Northwest. Visit today, dubnetwork.ca, and for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars, now with eight amazing flavors, including the new Almond Mocha. Order yours today at our... Uh, use the promo code RP Show and get 20% off. Go to the website, g2gbars.ca. I'm going to take a break now, Moose. Right. And when we come back, the full viewer takeover in overtime. Okay, so get your comments and questions ready. I'd like to hear from some new people. And the Prairie Mobile text line is open as well at 306-840-8777. Prairie Mobile is your authorized SaskTel mobility dealer. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube, and Facebook Live in 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Stars, you're dispatched to a scene call. The patient has multiple traumatic injuries and is unconscious but breathing. This is why I backed the Stars Lottery. Stars, we can accept the mission. This is why I'm all in. Have a safe flight. The prize is the great. The cause is critical. Stars Lottery. The lottery on a mission. Get your early bird tickets by June 24th for a chance to win a truck, trailer, toys, and cash. Buy yours at starslottery.ca or 1-844-STARS-SK. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Comfort has always been something we as people strive for. It means that the places we live and work and that the people we care most about are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. 
proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. At Capital GMC, we don't just sell vehicles, we buy them too. You know how we always have such a big inventory with an amazing selection? That's because we buy all makes, all models, and all years. We're going to give you the best price every time. And you don't even have to buy from us. All you have to do is visit us online or in-store, answer a few questions about your vehicle, and we'll get you a great offer. We'll even cut you a check on the same day. So save yourself the hassles of selling privately and sell it to us. Because at Capital GMC, we'll buy it. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. We call it Viewer Takeover, and that's where we are right now here in overtime. And Moose is with me, and we got a lot of topics on the table, Darren, as always. Oh, yeah. Golden Corral of Sports Talk here. Trevor from the 550 writes in regarding a nickname for the new Winnipeg Arena today, the home of the Jets and the Manitoba Moose, which is officially the Canada Life Center, which is not exactly electric, you know. New. Uh, he says, name for the arena, Trevor from the 550. The Adjustment Bureau. I see it. Sure, I have not heard anything better. The Canada Life Center. The hangar? For the yeah. Jets, well, yeah. Well, they call it the hangar. They this call is, it that. Yeah. But not for Canada Life Center. The Canada Life Center. People are dying to get in here. That's true. <laughs> From the 780. It's, it's not a morgue. <laughs> <laughs> from Trevor. Well, just hang on. The Pats, one of the owners of the Pats, he's not anymore, but Todd Lombard, his family owns Spears Funeral Chapel. Yeah. <laughs> you go to Pats games and it's like, tonight's warm-up brought to you by, the warm-up brought to you by Spears Funeral Home. <laughs> Talk about setting a vibe. Oh, I know. Where's that? Let's, there it is. Let's get everybody excited for the game, eh? <laughs> it's the warm-ups. Get up. Get out of your seat. It's the warm-ups for Spears Funeral Home. How anyway, Trevor. Hi, Rod. Love the show and so excited for the new CFL season. Planning rider road trips from Sherwood Park to Regina all summer. Any idea when the league will announce when non-season ticket holders will get a chance to buy tickets? Jumping the gun, I know, but have two years of fun to make up. Teaching my kids about Rider Nation. All the best, Trevor. Don't uh, know the answer to that. Yeah, I imagine it won't be until July. John from Edmonton from the 780 writes in, Rod, don't you think it's weird? Edmonton does not play PC or BC or Toronto at home. What's up with the 7.45 p.m. Mountain Standard Time kickoff games in Edmonton? I could like... <laughs> You haven't had games for 600 days, and now you're going to bitch about the kickoff times? Of course. Stop the world. <laughs> Stop the world. I want to get off. From Mark. What, what? Put the phone down. Step away from the keyboard. Ah, we haven't done the poll question, Clark tells me. All day? Poll question today for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Who should win the Jack Adams Trophy as NHL Coach of the Year? And the finalists are Rod Brindamore, Dean Evason, or Joel Quenville. What do they got there, Moose? Uh, uh, 
Rod Brindamore at 50%. He's the, uh, the leader. That's the sentimental value. It is. And no, he's, and he's done a great job, too. No, he's they all a, done a great job. A really tremendous job. But we love Rod Brindamore. The Hurricanes such a, do such a great job on their social media of getting inside the locker room and really building the brand of what that identity of the team is, right? And we love Brindamore for it. It seems like the players would do anything for that guy. So we love him. I think Quenville deserves it, what he's done in Florida. He's brought that team um, into the spotlight, moved him into the playoffs as a top team in the National Hockey League. Yeah, they couldn't get out of the first round, but they ran into Tampa. And they all played Tampa for a bulk of that series. Just ended up on the wrong side of some games. So, for me, I go with Quenville. Uh, I got to go with I, – I would have said Quenville, too. Honestly, he'd have my vote. But Brendy has a lot of – he's got a lot of fans around That's here. That's right. Campbell River, BC, I believe. But I know that he played for uh, the Notre Dame Hounds, Luke Ter 8, Amirgo. John in Edmonton watching on Facebook says, I'm not the only one in Edmonton wondering why we have to kick off at 7.45 p.m., Rod. Then this, the sun goes down at like 11 up there, doesn't it? Yeah, the summer. Like, yeah, what are you, what are you worried about? <laughs> it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. William May in Lloydminster. Throw the phone instead of the pen at the end of the show, Rod. Remember that time I threw my shoe? Yeah. You almost hit me. <laughs> I didn't want to break the camera. I knew that you'd get out of the way. Sur- no, I knew that you'd survive. That's right. Even if I hit you. That's right. The camera might not survive. Um, oh, from Jeff Cabellus. I don't know about you, but I just about jumped out of my chair when White Cloud lit up Corey Perry. That was a physical game last night. Very physical game. Did you see Corey Perry spear Marc-Andre Fleury? I didn't see it. It was under a pile, and granted, it happened at lightning speed, but it still happened. Is that when he stacked the pads? Yes. The two pads stack was, first of all, awesome. The crowd in front and Flurry, you can see there was a moment he's just like, I'm just going to lay down and stack my pads old school and uh, kept the puck out. But, yeah, they were just trying to shovel that, push him right into the crease there. Oh, are you saying I might have over-exaggerated? It wasn't a spear? It looked like a a spear to me. They tried to shovel him into the net with the puck. They were trying to score the goal. I I think it was well-intended. But Do you know how many times I tweet and then delete it? A minute later, watching the Golden Knights play. You know, it's funny. I had this conversation <laughs> with Drew Koser off the Hazel podcast. And the Brent I, and Sutter of the Prairie I'm pretty Gym. good. Positive. I'm optimistic. Yeah. I am, you know, very composed, except on the golf course. I was telling him, like, it's the one place I lose all my composure. And that's you tweeting during a Golden Knights game. You are <laughs> like a vault yeah. 99% of the time when the Golden Knights are playing, you should just they should deactivate your Twitter account. I lose my mind. Yeah. Drew Koser, the Brent Sutter of the Prairie Junior Hockey League. Is he still that? I know. Till he's- Mandy in Edmonton, she's getting it. She says we're not allowed to say anything about the schedule. We have to be quiet and be thankful. LOL. <laughs> now you're getting it. They're finally getting it, Darren. Yes. It only took 2 hours. Yes. Be happy. Be grateful. The CFL is playing for the first time in a year and a half. Don't bitch about kickoff times and who they're playing. Tomorrow, do you have anything else? That's No, I'm excited. I, a little confused, or not confused, but 14-game schedule and you're not going to play every team? That kind of gets me a little bit, but it'll be good. <clears throat> you too. I know. Uh, coming up tomorrow, the ageless and peerless Murray McCormick. And a couple of TBDs. So tune in for that. Thanks today to Cameron Hughes, Charleston Hughes, Justin Dunk, all of you people. And we'll see you tomorrow at noon Eastern. Because I thought I was going to see Cindy Lauper. And then I get there and she's nowhere to be found. You just got duped. I got, I got duped. Yeah. Hey, who wants to get duped by dupe? <laughs> we